it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and today I'm designing a layout for Bramble Fox using some of the new Halloween goodies that have hit the store um, and anybody who knows me will know how much I love Halloween, I'm obsessed with it. Um, so I'm using two sets of perspectives today, I've got the October 31st set and also the mini Halloween set, there's lots of little bits in there um, and I'm also going to use paper snips number 12. I've pulled out the new Simple Stories Halloween collection. So it's, I think it's Simple Vintage October 31st, I think it's called. I might have completely made that up. Um, but it's my first play with it, which is nice and exciting. And it goes really nicely with these perspectives. So I'm starting by cutting some squares from papers. Um, I've used that gorgeous starry paper. And I've cut a square, I think it was eight by eight inches. And then I cut a sheet of just A4 white card in seven and a half, I think it was, squared. But um, you can't really see it on camera here, but it was a slightly different white to my background cardstock, which uh, it just won't do, <laughs> um, it just bugged me. So I swapped that out in a minute and I cut into another sheet of 12 by 12 if I haven't already done so. But I felt like I needed a bit of orange behind that starry paper. So I'm now cutting another square and I think that one was seven and three quarters um, inch squared just so that they are slightly different sizes. And then I'm going to have them sort of um, offset on the middle there so you can see little bits of each at the corners. And in the end, I end up bringing that orange one to the top because the perspective title I'm using is black. I just felt like I wanted a bit more orange to show behind um, kind of, I'll say my background, but that smaller white square that I'm going to build my layout on. Um, I felt like I just needed orange behind that. And I'm going to distress the edges of these just to bring in lots of texture. It's something I love to do on all my layouts anyway, but it's perfect for Halloween. I just think torn edges and loads of texture on the page is just perfect for Halloween. And I'm just using a little distressing tool for that that I got from Amazon. It's a couple of pounds, really cheap. But if you haven't got one of those to hand, you can also use the edge of your scissors as well. Just run the blade down, either open or closed, just run it down the edge of your paper um, and it will give the same effect. I just find I'm quite heavy handed with the scissors and I end up tearing my paper. Um, so I tend to go for my distressing tool instead. And then I've got these um, going to sit on the centre, as I said, and I'm just going to stick them together with a bit of double sided tape so that I can start working on things and building this layout up. So I get the two patterned cardstocks um, or papers in place first. And then that white area, that's I think it's seven and a half inch square piece that I'm going to build my layout on. I decided to ink the edges of that one. It just didn't quite sit right on top of the patterned papers. It, it needed an edge to it. So I've distressed the edges and now I'm just running a black distress ink pad across the edge, but it wasn't really getting it dark enough. So I'm going to use a blending brush as well. And then I decided to come in onto the paper a bit to give it a little bit more of a black edge. So where I've inked that, like the very edge, um, that's gone really dark. And then just the outer edge of that paper, um, it's almost like a grey colour because it's so light. But I've got some um, nice inking on that edge now. And where I've done that, and as I've sort of turned it around to ink another edge, it's touched my white background and left black smears all over the left hand side. And you can't really see it on the camera here. But in a minute you'll see, um, I, I was hoping to try and cover it up or do something with it. But the more I went on, the more I just realised that wasn't going to be possible. So I do end up having to try and tear everything off that background in a minute to um, swap it onto a fresh background. Which is a pain for me because my double sided tape is really strong. I know a lot of people call say about it being repositional tape, but mine's really not. It's super duper strong. And you'll see the damage I cause in a minute, just trying to um, remove those bits of patterned paper. Uh, yeah, carnage. But yeah, you live and learn. <laughs> it's been a while since I've scrapped. I haven't been at my desk for about three weeks. So um, it was all fingers and thumbs and it's almost like I'd forgotten what to do. Um, so yeah, live and learn from that one. Anyhow, um, onto my layout. Um, I've added some stenciling to my background. That was Fox Cut number 17. It's a Bramble Fox stencil and it is my all time favorite stencil from Bramble Fox. And I've used a Distress Oxide in the shade Ripe Persimmon through that, so a lovely orange color for my background. And then I'm gonna have my perspectives sat on the top there on the right hand corner. Now I adore these, they are cut from black acrylic 
but they've got etched details all over them um, and it's etched as little spider webs so it's really perfect for Halloween um, and when you look at it really closely you'll see in the close-ups at the end the detailing that Morag has managed to get on these it's not just lines for spiders webs it's like little individual little etched bits for each line um, it's incredible detail but it um, gives it a really lovely effect and like I say perfect for Halloween I'm still not happy with that background. I added some black splatters using the black distress ink, um, black soot, but where I'd watered it down, it just wasn't black enough. So I rolled the paper towel over that and soaked most of it up. I'm gonna come back in at the end um, and redo those. But I also added a little bit of stamping there. So I had just um, a texture background stamp nothing special i think i bought it pre-loved from a facebook group um, off a fellow scrapper and it's just given a lovely bit of detailing to my background and i've used black stays on ink for that um, just because it's a bit blacker than my distress ink but it also means that when i come to add my splatters back in later um, the water's not going to react with that stamping and mess that up so um, yeah stays on is like waterproof and you can add water and ink and all sorts on top of it and it stays put as the name suggests um, so yeah i've used that for my stamping i've added a couple of patterned papers behind my photo as well just to help it sort of stand out and give it a bit of something behind it where i'd matted it on white cardstock um, it just needed something darker around that edge um, to make me happy really um, so i've used patterned papers for that and now i'm cutting into paper snips number 12 and this almost felt criminal because i love this paper snips it just all looks so perfect together on the page but alas they are meant to be cut up so that is what i'm doing really forced myself um, but I've cut that gorgeous stack of pumpkins there so my photo today is my little boy sat on our doorstep on Halloween last year just before we went out trick-or-treating and um, so I decorated all the doorstep and the front of the house um, you can't really see it in the photo there's loads of pumpkins either side of him all stacked up um, some carved some not one vomiting pumpkin seeds um, at my little boy's request he's asked for that one again this year so another load of mess to clear up but he loves it and so do I so I can't complain but I thought that little paper snips was perfect to go there I'm coming in also with some chipboard stickers now from that simple stories collection um, lovely little pumpkin cluster and then I've got a little um, kind of like bunting that I'm going to try and thread underneath my pumpkin there and up through the banner bit to, um, you'll see here, just sort of tucking it underneath so that it follows the curve of that pumpkin and then it goes up and I think that actually says pumpkin, I can't remember now, um, but yeah I like how that looks and then this is where I come in and start destroying everything because of those black marks on the background. I had to try and get my ruler under there. And considering I'd only used three bits of double-sided tape, there you go, you can see the damage that it's caused. It's just super stuff. And it's only from the range, I think. It's not even expensive. But yeah, once it, something is stuck with it, it's best to just leave it. But that background was really bothering me. So I'm a lot happier now I've got a nice crisp white background and I'm gonna get the last few bits stuck in place. So I'm raising a lot of things up on foam. Um, that little paper snip pumpkin stack, that's raised up on foam. There's some foam behind my photo. I always raise my photo up on foam just to try and make it stand out with every, just off the background from everything else so that your eye is still drawn to the photo. Um, I do like to embellish quite heavily on some pages and I don't want my photo to get lost amongst that. So I find that the foam behind that really helps. And I've got my perspectives at the top stuck in place now. I use my glossy accents for that. That's always my go-to adhesive for my perspectives. Um, and if I'm using like sequins or foam and things, I tend to use it for those as well. It's just really strong stuff. And I've never had a perspective sort of pop off of a layout in an album yet. So um, yeah, love my glossy accents for my perspectives. So I've pulled in a couple more little die cut pieces from that Simple Stories collection and scattered those around my photo. And now I'm coming in with the mini Halloween perspective set and I love these, lots of little bits. You've got a couple of um, like tombstones and some bats and I just love bats for Halloween. They're just perfect. They work for any Halloween layout, doesn't matter what you're scrapping. You can stick a bat or a pumpkin on it and it's just perfect. So I've gone for an orange bat up the top and then a black one down the bottom. 
um, or to the right of my photo there. And I just love, mini perspectives are one of my favorite, in fact, they're all my favorites, but you know, I love a good title, but I love the fact that with the mini perspectives, you can just tuck a few in here and there as an additional um, detail to your background. And I just love the way they look. Um, they're just so cute and really easy to use. And usually, obviously, this set is quite themed it's halloween but usually they're quite generic like the stars or things so you can use them on anything um, and i know morag's got some leaves coming out for autumn again little mini leaves and she's doing some wooden ones as well with gorgeous edge details so um yeah if you've never bought mini perspectives before i really do recommend them because they are fantastic for just tucking in here and there I just finished the layout off there with some more black splatters. So I used black acrylic paint in the end because that distress ink, it just, when, when it soaks into the background, it just goes gray. So I find that the acrylic paint just sits nice on the surface and stays a truer black. So I did those. And then I remembered I wanted to add some more paper snips. Now I've got black splatters everywhere. Um, I usually try and leave my splatters till the end. I just never learn. I always forget something. Um, so I'm just going to add a few more of the paper snips, um, number 12, to the bottom corner there. I just wanted something on that bottom corner of that orange polka dot paper. Um, so I've got three little bits, I think two black and one orange that I've trimmed out. I'm raising them up on foam pads and then I'm just going to stagger them sort of at an angle underneath that bunting there. And then that will be me done. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the layout and the process. It's my first Halloween layout of the year, which is super exciting. Um, it definitely won't be the last. I'm going to spend the whole of October scrapbooking Halloween. Um, and I've got loads of Bramble Fox goodies to help me with that. You'll be so bored of me by the end of the month. Before Halloween has even happened, you'll be bored of me. Um, but I never get bored of Halloween. I could scrap it all year round. So I'll pop some links in the description box for you to the Bramble Fox website. I'll leave a link to the Halloween collection as well. Um, and also to our Foxbox subscription page. If you're not already a Foxbox subscriber, head on over to the website um, and have a look at that because it's a monthly box. You get packed full of things and you can get the Foxbox Plus now as well, which is exciting. So I'll leave some details about that below. But um, I'll leave you with the rest of the close-ups. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.